so much of the town revenue now comes from stopping and arresting its citizens. 20,000 people are in Ferguson. 16,000 of them have warrants. I mean, it's a stunning number. Can you imagine 20,000 people and 16,000 of them having warrants? That's the town business. So when Mike Brown gets stopped, it wasn't because he stole something out of a store. In fact, that wasn't even an issue at the time of the stop. It was, he was stopped for jaywalking. These are the types of offenses people are stopped for, particularly black people in Ferguson. And so between that and public housing, pruitt Igo collapsing in St. Louis, uh, a kind of failed experiment uh, of, by, by, any, by any measure, liberal or, and conservative. Uh, all of those things led people to go to Ferguson, led people to, to see what, hap to, to what happened to Mike Brown. And so to some extent, the story of Mike Brown was a much deeper story than the story of uh, a particular act of state violence. And then as I was going to write the proposal and send it out, we were back in New York and Eric Garner, uh, who had been killed by, or, or I should say Daniel Pantaleo, we often don't talk about the police who do this, we talk about the victims, but Daniel Pantaleo, who killed, Mike, who killed Eric Garner, was not indicted. Uh, and we were marching in the streets. And we're back in Ferguson right before that because of the non-indictment of Darren Wilson. And before we knew it, we went on this sort of tour over the next year of really high-profile cases of state violence. Eric Garner, Mike Brown, Walter Scott, who was shot in the back running away in Charleston. Sandra Bland, who was found hanging from a jail cell in Hempstead, Texas. Freddie Gray, who was beaten uh, because he had the audacity to look a cop in the eye, which is why they chased him, which is why he ran, et cetera, et cetera. And so in each of these cases, my book tries to get underneath that. It, in, in the case of Mike Brown, it was public housing and, and joblessness. In the case of uh, Freddie Gray, it was about the prosecutor's office and, and the historically unprecedented amount of power prosecutors have and the way in which public defenders have been sort of disempowered uh, and the public itself has come under assault. You know, in the case of Sandra Bland, it's about the way that black women and girls are criminalized in their interactions with police, but also how mental illness itself is criminalized. And we go, I go on down the list in each of those cases to get a deeper issue of nobodiness and disposability that I think is partly about racism. It's partly, it's largely indebted to the legacy of white supremacy, but we can't at any moment ignore the fact that all of these things exist within the context of a, of, of a neoliberal moment where the market becomes our ultimate measure of goodness. A, mar a market becomes our ultimate decider. A market becomes the ultimate court of appeal to adjudicate competing worldviews. The market becomes privatization, deregulation, austerity. These become the kind of buzzwords that we use that have become common sense. And so as long as we live in the context of a class defending state, we're going to have these other things going on. And so my book is undergirded by that assumption, but it's really digging at each of these cases to give us a bigger story of what it means to be nobody in 21st century America.